So I am here with Bridie. Hello. Bridie, we're going to go for a ride in your Tesla Model Y. Exciting. Let's go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. Go, go for Let's <laughs> do it. So Bridie, you have owned this Tesla Model Y for how long? I've owned the Tesla Model Y since August 2022 when they first arrived because oh, wow. I hopped online and bought one as soon as the orders became live. You went back to my car, I'm buying that car. I had been <laughs> eyeing it off for a couple of years. I had a Model 3 before then. Oh, okay. But um, I knew that the Model Y wasn't coming here for a while. And I was writing about EVs. I'd been writing about EVs for three years or something and I had a plug-in hybrid had an old Outlander, but I really wanted to go all electric. Yep. So I bit the bullet and got the Model 3, and then um, once the Model Ys were available to order, I jumped online and hit that button. <laughs> Did you notice a big difference in quality between the 3 and the Y? Or was it pretty no, similar? No, no, no. The quality was fine. My Model 3 was from China. Okay. It wasn't one... I got it in 2021. So it wasn't one of those like really early like, excuse me, I'm just going to adjust this because I can't see <laughs> I out the Brian window now. lower so that we can actually see her behind yeah. the mirror. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it, was, it wasn't, you know, those early ones out of Fremont that, you know, they were still learning how to put cars together basically. I mean, still good right. cars, but obviously there were lots of complaints about panel gaps and things at the time. Yeah. Yeah. But the main thing I noticed and because um, I happened to be driving actually a Porsche Taycan up to Brisbane to return it on the day that the orders went live and um, so I went straight to Southport and had a look at the Model Y and the big difference was the space and the height. Yeah. 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 And that's what I And the fact that it's a proper boot. (laughs) Yeah, it's amazing. There's so much space. It's like... It is still one of the most spacious cars I've driven. 2,000 litres of space or something and I can lie in the back if I want to. Wow. Yep. And yeah. camp, Camp mood. I have camped in it. Wow. Oh, yeah. I've got my eye on a Model 3, a Model Y mattress currently, but ah. we'll wait and see about that. So you live in Queensland and you have driven down to Sydney where we are going to go and do a podcast together today. Um, what, how many kilometres is that that you've driven? I'm actually, I'm very close to the Queensland border. I'm okay. about an hour from it. Um, so northern New South Wales. So it's a, I think it's about an 800 kilometre journey to oh, get to Sydney. God, but I thought electric cars didn't travel very far. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> they are well, I mean, you know, there has been a big rollout of charging infrastructure yeah. over the last, I mean, when did the um, NRMA started? rolling out infrastructure in 2019 or Mm. something um and then obviously tesla had superchargers um so that i mean that's increased so that there are more of them so an 800 Um, kilometer journey how many like how long did that take you to get down here and how many stops did you make like can you kind of i make three stops right um i do two shorter stops i do the first stop in coffs harbour okay um just a bit of a top up quick loose stop so is there a supercharger I do the, use the supercharger. The I have ones. so this last trip I did all with superchargers, but I have okay. done the whole trip with um, NRMA chargers okay. as well, and um, both are good. The the um, I think they're upgrading the NRMA ones. They were fifty kilowatts last time I did it, whereas those Tesla superchargers are you know one hundred and one hundred and twenty kilowatts yeah. or something. But um, so yeah. on that first stop in Coffs, how long do you stop for? Like. I stopped for 15 minutes. Oh, that's nothing, isn't it? That's going and going to the loo and stretch yeah. your legs and yeah, exactly. And then we stop at Port Macquarie, actually at Thrumster, which is just off the highway. You don't have to go all the way into port. Okay. And oh, I've seen the battery there. There's a small battery there that I visited recently. Yes. Oh yes, you yes. went there to see Essential Energy. Yes, I did. Yes. So there's a couple of chargers there at Thrumster. Yeah. There's NRMA and superchargers. Yeah. And honestly. The car charges before we can finish lunch. Like we stop, we go to the little shopping centre there, we stop at the cafe, we have lunch, and it's usually the car is ready to go before we are. Wow. Yeah. So it's really not a problem. It's just a little shift in thinking. Like you don't have to stop, pull over, Wait. fill up the fuel, go and pay for it, 
try not to piss someone off who's waiting in queue. <laughs> yep. You know, you just you just plug in and go and have but a But where have a nice you stop, lunch. you do things, right? You're you're yeah, that's stretching what I mean. those. Yeah, you're, so yeah. It is, I see what you mean. You're not just sitting and then waiting in the car for 40 no. minutes or whatever. You're just, you know, no, or 15 minutes. No, you're doing even. less waiting because you just plug it in and you walk away. And yeah. then you go and do what you need to do. Yeah. Um, and then we do it at another stop, and this time we stopped at Raymond Terrace. There's oh, yeah. a new supercharger yes. site there. And yeah, same thing, just had a quick stop, just walked into Woolies to get some snacks for the final rat run mm -hmm. into Sydney. Yep. And yeah. So you did all of that in one day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy. I mean, you know, like all in all, it was really like one extra hour. Yeah, right. Which, and you say one extra hour, you would be stopping anyway. You, in, well, you, if you drove that car, car without and just did a five minute stop, that'd be dangerous. You would have to have an amazing bladder for a start. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't last that long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So if I say an extra hour, but really, um, you know, unless you've got some sort of superhero skills there, yeah. it's maybe an extra half an hour. You know, it's really not that much difference. Could you ever see yourself going back to a petrol or diesel car? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still yet to find someone who will do that. No. Yeah, I, you know, um, I'm looking forward to driving around Australia one day. I know that that's takes more planning yeah um but it's doable and i know lots of people who've done it and i've written stories about them doing it yeah and it's just it's just a little bit yeah more planning making sure that you're um checking ahead where you're going um and where you're going to plug in and what sort of cables you might need and mm. that sort of stuff because different places in those remote stretches often there might be a roadhouse they might just have a three-phase connection. Oh, you might have your mobile connector that you can plug into a wall, but you don't have the right adapter, the yeah. right plug for yeah. the three-phase. So, yeah, those sort of things you do need to think Pray. about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good point. I remember last time I saw you, actually, we were talking about the efficiency of this vehicle. You were so impressed with it because, you know, we so you know a lot about electric cars. Yeah. This, do you, I, th I still think this is one of the most efficient vehicles on the market. Do you? What do you get per 100k? It's like kilowatt hour um, wise. So I can show you. So at the moment, it says that we've got an average of 217 watt hours per 100 kilometres. That's actually quite high. That's the last 10 kilometres. Mm -hmm. Average over the last 50 kilometres is 182. But if I go to, sorry, we're stopped at lights so I can do this. <laughs> if we go and look at the trips, and then I've got my lifetime. Oh, um, wow. I've driven 62,000 kilometres in this car. The average energy is 146 watt hours per Gee, kilometre. Gee, that's amazing. Yeah. That's really good, especially for a car of this size. Yeah. I did an article once about what were the most efficient cars mm. to drive because obviously I think this conversation is something that would be good to have a bit more is about the efficiency of the vehicle because the more efficient the vehicle is, the smaller the battery can be, you know? Right. Um, or, conversely, the m higher the range can be with the same amount of cells. Well, the, the, and it'll save you money in the long term, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and at the time, it was the Hyundai Ioniq, which mm -hmm. isn't made anymore. It's that little fastback. Yeah. And the Tesla Model 3, what was known as the standard range back then. They were the two most efficient cars that you could get. Really? Yeah. Um, but this is the most efficient SUV size vehicle. Mm. Um, I think the still isn't that amazing. The Auto Three is quite good. Just just from like you know probably the last two years of cars. I haven't s sort of looked into the figures for the, all of the new Chinese ones that are coming out. Mm. Yeah. And so um, you can charge at home. Uh, yes, I can. Do you have solar and? I have solar. We've got twelve kilowatts of solar. <gasps> I got a 15 amp. Um, so jealous. I know. I got a 15 amp plug installed outside the garage on a separate circuit from yep. the rest of the house. Because yep. before that, I was running an extension cord from the garage and it would trip the house if, you know, someone put something in the washing machine at the same right. time. So, yeah, we made that decision. And that didn't cost a lot. And that's been fine, you know. I work from home mostly, so often the car will just charge during the day. So you mostly charge from solar then? Yeah, mostly. Mm. Yeah. So well, hang on, so let's go back. So you had a Tesla Model 3. How long did you own that for? About a year and a half. Okay. And yeah. did you find the sedan frustrating, like the not having a hatchback? 
for me it's the height because I'm 5'11 and um, it's just getting in and out. I just prefer the height to get in and out of. Right. And yeah, getting things in and out of the boot, you know, that whole bending over thing, if your back's not great, that can, mm. yeah, so prefer a big hatchback. Yeah, you can't fit a drum kit in the back of that. You can fit a 22-inch bass drum on the back seat of a Tesla Model 3. I can attest to that. It's been tested. <laughs> yes. And now you know. These things can be done. Like, I know people that have camped in their Model 3s. Kidding. Yeah, like, you know, it's Just a stretch. Legs through yeah, the back. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah well, because oh, you, yeah. you can put That's the seats fine. down, so you Pull can still do it. End. You just yeah. don't have as much height to sit up and stuff yeah, like that. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Bridie. You have been absolutely fantastic. Oh, thank you. It's always so interesting, and I love chatting to someone who knows more about EVs than I do. That's actually brilliant. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's just so many EVs to know about now. I feel like I know less and less every day. I'm looking forward to see what happens in 2025. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Mm -hmm.